wants to join in. So I, I accepted the co-stream. I just don't know if it actually worked. We'll see. It it'll pop up over here on the PC. I got my PC up. Yeah, mine's too. over here to the side. All right, all right. Might want to send that a uh, co-stream one more time. Send the co-stream one more time. I got you. And we'll be able to start this bad boy. Word. Let me know when you're ready. Oh, you sent it? Yeah. Did you not get it? Uh, oh, no. I bet you're appearing offline, that's why. Ah, uh, I wonder if... Okay, yeah. let me appear online. In fact, let me send you the co-stream. Maybe it'll just be like super shortcut. Well, so I went ahead. I, I blocked the party and everything, so... Yeah, but I can still here. Yeah, you should be able to. This, send this should work. Yeah. This is gonna take a while for it to be like, oh yeah, he's online now. There we go. Now it's showing. Now it's showing. Perfect. Yeah, there we go. No camera, Diz. Yeah, no camera. I ain't got a camera for this. Eventually in time, I'll have it set up. I need to get a lot of this stuff still set up and everything. I'm still working on all of that. But anyways, anyways, let's uh, let's go ahead. Let's get this show on the road. Uh, <clears throat> so today we are going to be doing our Lords of Gaming reaction to the Xbox E3 2019 presentation that just took place uh, roughly. What was it about? It ended about two hours ago. No, an hour ago. My time is so yep. gone. So ended about an hour ago. So um, today I'm going to be um, I am iDizzy81, of course, and I'm going to be joined today by uh, my co-streaming partner over here, Warfingers. Yo, what's up, guys? Absolutely, absolutely. War, what do you, what have you been up to? What have you been streaming? Uh, man, I just been. Uh... Working on getting my stream together the way it should look, and uh, been streaming a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but trying to get back into streaming day Z, man. That's what's up, that's what's up. And then we're also being joined by who I like to call the first lady over at Lords of Gaming, Panda. Panda, how are you doing? Hello, I'm good, how are you? Doing fantastic. What have you been gaming on lately? You seem to be like... You know, um, a shadow in the wind these days. Yeah, I've been kind of silent lately. Um, I've been playing a lot on PC, so a lot, a lot of just smaller indie games on PC. And then I just recently joined the party. I know I'm late to Cuphead. Um, so I've been playing a lot of couch co-op um, with my fiancé on uh, Cuphead. Awesome, awesome. Well, that's. I'm glad you were able to make it and uh, join in with us today. Uh, so, you know, let's get right to it. So today was Xbox's E3 presentation, and we got to see what they have been cooking up and things that they're going to plan on delivering, you know, in the future for Xbox gamers, PC gamers, just gamers in general. That seems to be one of their big taglines going forward. It's about for the gamers, not for who you are gaming on um, or what you are gaming on, which is a pretty nice thing being an all-inclusive kind of deal bringing people into the uh into a better community as far as being able to have accessibility and such um <clears throat> there were a lot of things that were rumored to be being shown some made it some did not um how do y'all feel that there was no fable 4 announcement i'm pretty disappointed <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a 
big fable guy, so I wasn't too hurt by it. <laughs> okay, so we have uh, two on the opposite end of the, the spectrum. What made you uh, disappointed, Panda? Uh, what is it about Fable that you were anticipating and hoping you were going to be able to see? I mean, you know, I've I've been following Fable since, you know, the first one, and so anything really regarding Fable is exciting to me personally. Um, I mean, of course, I don't think that with, you know, Fable 2 or Fable 3, it can ever compare to the very first one. Um, but even just a little glimpse of just something regarding that series would have been really exciting and, you know, something else to look forward to with all the other great titles that are uh, coming out in, you know, 2019, the rest of 2019 and 2020. Fair enough, fair enough. I think that that's a, a very... Um very fair statement with that you know i, I think that uh, it's one of those that i wasn't surprised that it wasn't there i i don't think that any studio at this time has had enough time to let that game cook even if they were developing it um the big rumors right now is that it's being developed by playground games i'm kind of on the i don't believe that rumor mill even though there's a lot of there's a lot of signs that may point to it but you know um I'm actually not surprised i didn't see it there um let it cook. That's all I can say. Let it cook. Uh, when you're ready to show it, I guess, you know, show it us, uh, show us the game at that time. Um, as far as your highlight, uh, Warfingers, what was your highlight of the show? Keanu Reeves, bro. What do you think? <laughs> Keanu Reeves with Cyberpunk. Yeah. It was that, that, no, Cyberpunk that... looked really good. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Uh, I mean, nothing really jumped out at me is like oh this is gonna be freaking amazing man but uh well i mean yeah cyberpunk was pretty cool that looked pretty like, i look forward to playing that when it comes up for sure see. so on yours years of cyberpunk what about with you uh, you panda you oh, panda man. i'm not sure if, uh, <laughs> i might have missed it um so me being like a big indie game fan and, and a horror fan in general, I'm I'm pretty um, excited for Blair Witch um, and 12 Minutes, um, but I'm also a fan of games like Overwatch and stuff like that. <laughs> I know that Overwatch recently um, hasn't been uh, super great, but... I'm pretty excited for Bleeding Edge. Um, it didn't get, from what I could see um, through the chat that, you know, that I was watching, because I was watching on Twitch um, at work, and it wasn't getting, like, super, super great reactions, but I don't know. I, I thought it looked pretty similar to Overwatch, and I really enjoy games like that. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you with the whole Bleeding Edge aspect. I, I think that the... The reaction that we were seeing with it, like a lot of individuals have been pointing out that, oh, well, this is, you know, Microsoft's doing because it's a multiplayer game, even though that this is something that they were actually developing this before Hellblade was even in the development. They actually stopped working on this game, which was their passion project, to go work on Hellblade. Um, you can actually see in some documentaries, uh, you know, that... Um, Ninja Theory has put up on YouTube and, you know, kind of goes in the depth of what was going on and why they made that decision. Um, the reaction, I think, you know, across the community, I'm not surprised. Um, you could definitely tell, you know, what side of the fence some individuals sit on whenever you see how they are reacting to it. I think it's a, a definitely a neat concept. You know, the, the 4x4, it's a brawler based, if I'm not mistaken, um, rather than a shooter based. Mm -hmm. Not Not saying that there wouldn't be projectiles, but... I think that that's a pretty cool aspect. Um, it it kind of looks like, I guess, if you were trying to take For Honor, in a sense, and give it the, <laughs> the Overwatch flair, I'd, I'd probably say. Yeah, I would say if, oh, if I was looking back... Go ahead. No, uh, now I remember what game you're talking about, because I was like, what the hell is he talking about? But yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked like Apex Legends meets uh, Overwatch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I would say I that, feel like I think it's that it's the same uh, old stuff. I think that my favorite thing that I saw the entire thing, and you know, this is just me and my inner fanboy popping out, was uh, the the announcement of the double fine 
um, acquisition, uh, mainly because I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of their work. Um, I, I really do like Tim Schafer and his direction. I was actually, uh, we were doing a watch party uh, with War, and I was like, this man is literally the Tim Burton of game development. Uh, you look at the, the games that they they develop and they put out there, like, I mean, even even uh, Warfinger said himself, is this James and the Giant Peach when we were looking at the Psychonauts 2 trailer? Yeah. You know, it's 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 <laughs> it's that unique twist and everything. And I I think that out of all of their studio acquisitions, this is the one that I'm actually most happy about because I think that it's a it's a good studio for what they do. Now, do they make the best games? They're they're not trying to compete with your your typical AAA titles. So bringing them into the fold, um, letting them work on the projects that they are great at, I think is a, a fantastic thing. And um, if anybody has yet to go see the um, the video of when they're discussing, you know, why they decided to make the move, um, it is actually up on Double Fine's YouTube. Uh, or if you want to head over to lordsofgaming.net, um, we actually have a small little article that actually has a couple of uh, details as well as uh, a couple of videos that you can look on and see why they made that reaction, as well as uh, the uh, the Psychonauts 2 trailer, which I am super pumped for. Actually, I, I need to go back and I, I need to beat the first one. H have either of you played Psychonauts from the original Xbox? I have not. Yeah, I have not either. But after watching the trailer for Psychonauts 2, I think I might just go yeah, mess around with it a little bit. It's definitely a fun game. It's... It, you definitely can get the old school feel out of it, but yeah. Uh, were there any other major highlights that you guys had for the show? Uh, Man, I mean, I mean, I could go down a on a lot. List. <laughs> I would say oh, you can go down a list, though. <laughs> yeah, list, list, let's go down this. I, I got a list over here, and I, I went ahead and I put this over to the side because I wanted to make sure that. The things I liked versus, you know, the things I didn't like about it. Um, I would say that I think that the other highlights, uh, of course, the double find was the the top for me. Just that's kind of like a, a personal reasoning. Um, now, it's not the most exciting. I, I could definitely understand that. I'd say that the other highlights I was seeing on there, uh, Age of Empires 2 and 4K, I thought that that was fantastic. It, it looked phenomenal. If they could only work on the... Uh, oh, yes. If, if they could work on the, the frames, because I, I was still noticing that there was a little bit of discrepancy with the frames. It definitely wasn't running its top notch, but man, I, I loved Age of Empires 2 back in the day. Um, I Go ahead. You want to say something more? Oh, oh you see me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I definitely love Age of Empires, man. I was, I was, I got, that was one thing I did get really excited about when I saw it. I was like, oh... This takes me back to my, you know, Warcraft days, and this is about the closest thing I can get to it on consoles, you know, uh, right. Age of Empires. Though I know they have, uh, like, Halo Wars 2, which is kind of like StarCraft, but, yeah, I was that was one thing I was definitely excited about. Right on, right on. Um, I, I'd say that after that, another highlight that I think that was part of the show, uh, how about Fantasy Star 2 online? Finally heading west. This game has been out. I am for, digging it. Is it has <laughs> yeah, it been it out for ten good. years? Ten years or so. Uh, um, it's been out it's a while. Longer than that. But it has yet to come west. Um, so for this to actually be, you know, kind of announced over here on the Xbox stage, that, I think I feel like that that is huge. Uh, Fantasy Star Online. Um, if anybody played it back on the, was it the Sega Dreamcast? It had a really robust community. Um, I know that they supported that game for quite a while. Uh, Fantasy Star Online, or just Fantasy Star in general, you know, it's it's definitely one of the older franchises uh, for RPGs and everything. And this one in particular for the JRPG style, um, very big for the fan base. And if I'm not mistaken, did it did it say free to play? I can't remember if it's uh, free I believe to play. so. so. So free to play, and I, I believe that has the majority of the content. I imagine that they're probably going to find a way. Uh, hopefully, it's not a nickel and diming system, but I imagine probably some sort of DLC that you would have to get out of that. Um, I would say, oh yeah, you know, I think that talking about Project Scarlet and actually giving a time frame, I I wasn't expecting them to give a time frame away. Um, 
I was expecting them to talk a little bit about it, you know, do exactly what they did with Project Scorpio, which was, ended up being the Xbox One X. Um, it looks like it, it went down the same line. The only difference is when they talked about the One X, it had a black background. Now it has a white background, which is kind of weird because they called it Project Scarlet. But, you know, I digress. Um, I thought it was pretty awesome that they actually gave a time frame. So now we know holiday 2020 is their scheduled launch of the the next xbox uh, but they also were talking about their commitment to the lineups of games going forward they're still going to be compatible with the older systems for the most part it looks like um, so if anybody's on a one x and doesn't want to immediately jump over um, most of those games you're going to be if not all you're going to be able to play on the the one x um <clears throat> I would also say, now this is probably an unpopular opinion because I've seen a lot of people on Twitter already uh, ranting about it, but I actually enjoyed uh, the Halo cinematic trailer. Now, what if I like gameplay? Of course, but I'm okay with how they. You could say that it. about a number of the things that they yeah, showed, though, bro. Yeah, a lot of things could have had gameplay there. You know, this one in particular, a lot of people were griping about this. Which I think that this one has a little bit more legroom to not show gameplay yet versus a game like Gears of War 5. In which, it's not that they aren't going to show gameplay. They actually said that, hey, you can watch gameplay later at this show. They just didn't show it on their stage. Which is it's right. kind of a weird move. I, I get why they're doing it because they want to put this on the pedestal for the, the Pro-Am circuits and... Uh, for you know the professional gamers and try to make that into the gear sport i get it um but you know for halo i think that the thing i like i, I like being able to see how the engine is working how nice they can make this thing looking um and i thought that I'd, I'd probably say this was the second best looking trailer i mean graphically looking uh, you know, it, I think that everything was overshadowed by uh, what, what was it—a flight simulator coming back. That that, gee, dude, flight that simulator. Low, that, that photo I mean, realism. Awesome. Yeah. Like I went, I went um, full Mexican right there. Look, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, so it looked amazing, I, bro. I was really impressed. Yeah, I I enjoyed it. Um, my girl was actually watching. She actually came home and she started watching. She actually teared up because she was watching the beginning where um, he's sitting there and he's looking, you know, he's watching this old thing of his kid and his wife as they're, you know, saying they're like uh, how they much they miss him because he's light years away, so on and so forth. <clears throat> so um, I thought it did the job to m get me as a Halo fan to want to get back into it because I'll be honest it is great as the multiplayer is for four and five. The story, I just feel like it just, eh, it's, it's not it. Um, there's a number of reasons, but that's, you know, a conversation for, you know, a different stream, but I felt that this trailer itself, it did great, but also on top of that, and this kind of like goes in one-on-one -on -one for my other highlight is I think that they ended the show great by ending the show with an xbox game and not with a third party game i think that they made a mistake last year as great as cyberpunk is going to be it's just really odd that you would end the show with a third party title rather than your own title um i think that they they learned from that mistake and ended it with their bangers so yeah i, I think as far as highlights those are mine did did y'all have any other highlights you wanted to point out um not really bro I mean, to be honest, and this was not a popular opinion either, um, I'm a big fan of Forza. <laughs> and I think that the LEGO um, expansion to Forza Horizon is actually kind of cool, kind of, kind of humorous in a way. Um, I really liked what they did with the um, announcement for it. And so honestly, I, I would like to play that. Really? Yeah. I'm just, not a big fan of I, like Lego games, but I, I really like the I Forza feel like that Horizon. Kind of would, well, I like Forza Horizon too, and I, I, I kind of felt like the whole introduction of the Lego stuff took away from the 
reality of the game because it kind of seems almost like a driving sim in a way. Cause, you know, they try to make things look as realistic as possible, the physics as realistic as possible. And so, but now we got Lego cars. Like, what? Yeah, yeah. I see that. I see. Uh, I see where you're coming from. I'd, I'd probably yeah. say to Panda's point, if you look at Forza Horizon, was a Forza Horizon three, and they had the the Hot Wheels, they had the Hot Wheels DLC. Um, so I mean, it's it's not surprising, but yeah, I, I, that's also another one that I, I saw wasn't a very popular opinion, which I thought was kind of odd. Um, so I guess moving along from that, then, what didn't work? What is something in this show, Warfingers? that you would have rather have seen differently or seen or just didn't like? Oh, I would have loved to have seen, like, a sober Keanu. <laughs> that would have been amazing. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, it just it didn't feel as exciting as it did last year when we watched it and we had the watch party. Yeah, I almost I feel like maybe there was less titles, that, yeah. like nothing, nothing too new was announced. Um... I think maybe 2019 is the year that they're working on stuff, and next year is going to be the really great year. But uh, yeah, I can see that. Opinion. I think I think it was Frodo that was in the party with us that had said uh, they got 60 titles to announce, and they they just showed 20 of them over there at the the little flashes for the ID at Xbox, for the indie titles. Right. Yeah. 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 I'd, I'd have to say that I think that it generally I, I'd say I don't think that there was anything that was really mind blowing that was announced. Um, I, I no. felt like the last year they definitely they had those like I did not see this coming. I think that the closest thing to that probably would be the Fantasy Star Online, but you know that aside, looking at everything else, nothing was just really like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait for this. Um, there's a lot of intrigue with things, but just nothing mind blowing. What about you, Panda? Was there anything that you just did not like, or would have rather seen different? <sighs> I don't know. Honestly, I mean, I and I I know that there's a big fan base for it, and I get why they're doing it, but I didn't really see a point in putting Minecraft on like a big, you know, big screen at E3, like a new thing with Minecraft. I know that there's a big, um, like I said, following for it, but I just I'm I didn't think that it was something that was as exciting as like E3 you know, E3 content should be. Yeah, it seems to be their trend. Let's put something Minecraft. The last what? couple of years, I think it was Sea of Thieves, but yeah, Minecraft is always something that, that, that pops up. I think that I had that same feeling, actually, when I saw State of Decay having DLC. Um, right. Really? Yeah, like, I mean... I don't know. It, I, was, I was happy about it. I mean... <laughs> I like a game that can extend its life and everything, but I, I just feel that State of Decay 2, there was a lot that was going on with that game, and I feel like that they're now, as a studio, in a position to move on to the next game that they want to work on, or the State of Decay 3, which will have the funding to make sure that the issues that they're having now are no longer present. Um, but... I, I see what you're saying with the, the whole Minecraft aspect. Like, it's just kind of weird. Um, but I mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting, you know, of what they showed. What's up, Linz? What's going on, Linz? Oh, sorry. Um, oh, no, sorry. No, you're so fine. I into my channel and said hello. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, we're discussing it right now, Linz. Yeah, so... Spoilers, I, spoilers. I... I, I I definitely Sorry. see what you're you're speaking about with the whole the whole Minecraft thing. Um, I would say here here's the things that I have on my list. Okay, so there was no game, and we kind of discussed it a little bit ago. No gameplay for Halo or Gears at the show, uh, and the, of course, mm -hmm. as stated, Gears was going to be holding a, a separate gameplay stream. Um, Gears Tactics. Where is Gears Tactics? Where are you at? You announced it last year. We see the pop vinyl this year and everything, and which I thought is, I mean, I expected exactly what they showed with pop vinyl. They said it was going to be a mobile game. It looks like a mobile game. I leave it at that. But where's Gears Tactics? 
I just feel that it's a little weird that it was not shown or even mentioned. Um, are we no longer working on it? Um, that aside, I say no multiplayer, no online multiplayer for Battletoads announced or suggested. Now, I may be wrong about this, but from what I've seen yeah. so far, it only says couch co-op, which I've, it's fantastic for couch co-op. I, I'm glad that they're in, they're, they're showing that. I think we kind of chatted about this pre uh, the show, but this day and age, not having online, that's just kind of odd. Yes. Yeah, I was about to say, it is a little odd. That's like the first thing you expect out of a game like that. But then I can, I, I can kind of see it, though. It's like, how would you do online with that? You're I mean, right. Wait, can I can I bring something up real quick? Yeah. Go for it. Last E3, um, they brought up a lot about like bringing gamers together via online and stuff like that. Um, you know how it was this huge, you know, community of people, and it, and it still is. But it is very weird that you know, doing this big heartfelt you know speech, uh, and all that. And then Oops. going back to, oh, you know, games only offering couch co-op, um, I mm -hmm. feel like it's a big disappointment for a lot of people because most of their community um, in gaming is online. Um, you know, I know I've, a lot of, I've met a lot of friends uh, through gaming, and there's not really a way that I can play some of these games that we look, you know, we all look forward to with them because mm -hmm. it's only couch co up. Yeah, yeah, no. I I just but I feel that that's thought. that's how things have evolved though over time, right? It used to be just couch couch co op. And then yeah. when and then online the land gaming was introduced. Yeah. Right. And and when that really took off, you kinda moved away from that. And like you said, that's I made tons of awesome friends playing online. But maybe just like a lot of other things that have been trending lately, they're just going back to basics, like back to right. The original I, I feel stuff like where... the, I feel like that there's always a time and a place for nostalgia, um, right? But I, I also feel that there's a lot Age of, of time for nos... <laughs> right? So, <laughs> but I, I also feel like that sometimes nostalgia may be better left in the past. I don't know how many times that we see a game Whoa. that's well. There's a lot of times where games are you know brought back and people forgot. Uh, Destiny. Uh. <laughs> forgot how bad they were back in the day or how things have changed and what you thought was good you perceived as awesome just really doesn't you know hold a candle I, I think that probably the best example is you look at things like uh, playing something on the original PlayStation or playing on the Nintendo 64 you play that this day and age I'm sorry it's an eyesore and you probably Bro, doesn't get your yes. attention as much whereas there are some nostalgic things, like if you play a Super Nintendo or a Sega game, which hold up a lot better because of the way that the art is formed on there. You know, so that's kind of like where, where my thought is, is as far as that is. I think it's um, certain games, though. Yeah. Because, like, uh, you saw just recently I was streaming uh, Final Fantasy VII. Final yeah. Fantasy VII. Yeah. And the graphics are pretty trash, but it was so fun because... Mm -hmm. It was like playing a whole like a game I'd never played before because it'd been so long. And yeah, it's it's been pretty pretty fun, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I definitely agree. There are that's why I said there's a time and a place, but there's a lot of it sure. that could be left behind. Um, I'd I'd probably say the only knack that I have, and again, this is just one of my personal things. I'm not a big platformer, but I felt like that there was a lot of platformers this year, so I think that that took a lot of the the wind out of it for me. Um, I know that there are people who love their platformers, and there's nothing against you if you enjoy platformers, but it's just not for me. And I, I just I felt like that there was an excess amount this year versus previous years. Um, but again, that's not that's neither here nor there. Um, what about is there anything else that y'all thought could have been better from the show standpoint? Uh, definitely some gameplay from uh, some of the new releases that they or that they announced and titles that they announced. That would have been okay, nice. So, yeah, gameplay. Uh, I, yeah, think I just that's prefer gameplay, the bro. I don't, 
your, your trailer's cute and everything, and it's like watching a little short movie, but I want to see what's happening. I mean, I want to see how your game looks. I want to see how, right. how it operates. If it's, I mean, if it's really right. worth all the hype. Yeah, I think that there were a lot of trailers this year, which were not gameplay trailers. Definitely very odd. I, again, I, I'm still not sure why they weren't showing Gears gameplay at the show rather than doing it on a separate one. I think that that could have saved a little bit of face, but when you don't have any sort of gameplay for either Halo or for Gears, you're definitely going to be taking a lot of steam out of out of the bag for yourself. Yeah, you get it. Yeah, there you got it. Yep. Like, yeah, I think it would have been awesome if they would have showed uh, Keanu playing the actual game, though, you know? Yeah, that actually, I think that that would have been good. That definitely would have been good. Um, what about you, Panda? Was there anything else that you would have rather seen different or, or done differently with the show? Um, I mean, me personally, I feel like, sure, like, gameplay is a very anticipated thing with both Gears and Um, But I think, really, they did their best with what... Um, you know, what they had. I know that there wasn't as many announcements this year as last year. I think that they're still working hard to make the game good, which, you know, if that's what they're doing, then that's great. Um, but, you know, I'm comparing this to... Um, to I know, I know that not... You know, you guys aren't as big of fans, you know, maybe as I am in this aspect, but with Death Stranding, we didn't get gameplay for a very long time. And mm-hmm. I feel like once it came out, you know, it it was great. It was really cool to watch. But then again, you know, it was still, you know, it's still just as mysterious as it was before. And I feel like even if they showed gameplay of Gears True. or if they showed gameplay of Halo... I feel like they may be risking a little bit of confusion because they don't want to show, you know, that whole, you know, g- amount of gameplay that players might be able to experience at, at E3. I think they want that to be an exclusive experience to the E3 convention goers. Um, sure. So I think they really did their best with what, you know, they had. And mm-hmm. I think that a lot of the indie games that they announced really looked... Um, really good and you know they they're they're talking about you know highlighting a lot of the smaller developers now so i think that it really worked for them well not as great as last year but i think that it was good for what they had okay yeah i I definitely i can see that standpoint it's a very valid thing so let's let's go over some of the games that were announced um and see what what y'all thought of it um you know let, let, let's start with uh how about let's start with elden ring um how did y'all feel about that one that was the one um from from software and george rr R. martin um personally i i see george rr R. martin and i'm already like okay like that's really cool but I don't think I really saw enough to get an idea, you know? Yeah, I'd have to agree with Panda on that. I agree 100%. I, like, it looks interest- It looks like that it could be interesting. Um, it looks like that it has a story to tell, and as we all know, I mean, George is well known for his stories, um, Game of Thrones fans. Um, but, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's. I think it's in a unique position because... I mean, we don't know a lot about it. We know that the individuals who are involved are well-renowned in their craft. Um, but at the same time, we, we've seen all too many times where a name being attached to something is the selling point rather than what is actually delivered. And then you end up finding exactly. out it's not as good. Um, so, yeah, I, I could definitely see that. Um, what about the one that they started off with, Outer Worlds? Yeah, I don't know how. I just, <laughs> I just rewatched it, and I'm like, wait, what? 
<laughs> Outer Worlds. That was the one. Uh, it was the the space one. It kind of like looked like a space RPG. A very. It, I'll be honest. It looked very Bethesda like to me. Um, I think that's why I don't know how facial I spell. animations. And, <laughs> right. I mean, it looked. It it had a very Falloutish vibe. I'll be honest. For a moment, I was oh, like, okay, I felt yes. like that it was Outer Worlds, but I started second guessing myself, and I was like, "Are they showing Starfield? Did did Bethesda let this happen?" Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, how do we? Uh, now that we know which one we're talking about, how do we feel about this one? Is anybody picking Scared. it up? It looks like that release <laughs> that releases this year in October. Is that scary? I'd like to see more. Right. Um, with the reputation of like, since it looks so much like a Bethesda game, um, you know, like Fallout, it's 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 a little um, scary to me. Just I was I was a huge fan of Fallout, and then you know, especially with Fallout Three, I felt like Fallout Three was super incredible, and you know, it was the first game like that that I played. Um, but then everything kind of slowly deteriorated. Um, which, and then when Fallout 76 came out, it was just like a plummet. So, um, right, everything. Hit I the think it's a little point. scary for me personally because it looked so much like Fallout. I think I'd have to see more before I would be able to give an opinion on it because I feel like the um, basis of it and everything and um, the setting, I think it's really cool. I just have to see more before I would invest in it. Right on, right on. Um, Ori Definitely. and the Will of the Wisps. How did we feel about this one? I can tell you it's a platformer. I don't care. I throw this in the trash. For yeah, me. I'm not a, I wasn't a fan. I I feel like they they talked about it last year, too. I feel like it was it looked very similar to last year, right. so I... Right. I wasn't... When I see this one, I see this screams to me, this is DLC, like what Cuphead is doing, where they're releasing DLC down the line rather than like a completely new game, in a sense. Now, I haven't played the first one. I haven't beat the first one. I have no intentions to. I hear great things about it, but I'll leave it at that. It is not for me. It's not my cup of tea. Um, but yeah, no, it, it looks very identical um minecraft dungeons i know that we briefly discussed it how how did that look to everybody i liked it when i saw it i'm a minecraft dude so you know i was like and i'm an RPG, rpg person so i was like oh this is dope finally they did something cool with minecraft i know they tried with uh what was it minecraft story mode or whatever it was yeah the telltale game and i tried mm-hmm. like yeah i tried the first season of that and I was just really disappointed. So I felt like that was something new, something I could look forward to playing when I get really bored with my other awesome games. Right on. Uh, what did you think about a Panda? Do you have any thoughts on that one in particular, other than that you're tired of Minecraft? <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> I've I've played Minecraft in the past, and I just feel like... And, you know, I played Minecraft. I played it for about, you know, a couple hours. I, I really tried to give it, like, a good chance, and I tried to, you know, go around. And I just, I wasn't a fan, and I feel like there's so much um, saturation that I've seen with Minecraft, and I feel like I just wasn't excited about it personally, but I can see where um, the fan base is, and, you know, it... it I personally didn't like it, but I can see why they would put it, you know, as a spotlight. Right on, right on. Um, okay, so this is a, a, a Lego game, not the DLC, um, but Star Wars Lego The Skywalker Saga. Any interest there for anyone? If I had like a five-year-old child, I'd buy it for my kid. <laughs> I don't think the even my five year old loves playing with Legos, but I cannot get him onto any of these games. Um, yeah, I. If you're into that, but I know. I might pick um, it up. Yeah, I. Just because like, I'm a Star Wars fan, you're so. a Star Wars guy. Yeah, I mean, that's what. 
as soon as I saw the sty and the the, the the Tie Fighter and the X Wing, they were kind of like flying around. I was like, "Up, oh, this is a Star Wars Lego game." I knew it immediately. Um, it's just not my cup of tea. I know that our our good uh, friend uh, Frodo of the Realm, um, he's huge into the Legos, and I, I believe that Zero also is huge into the Legos. Um, so I think that this is up their alley. No excitement for me. Panda, are you floored with excitement? For this Star Wars no. game? No. I mean, I'm not a big fan of, like, the Lego games, like, where it's just strictly centered around Lego. So, no, uh, not really. Okay. Um, what about... Okay, so looking through here, what else have we gone over? Um, of course, Age of Empires, that's day one for myself and War. We know that already. Um, let's see, uh, Psychonauts 2, did, did either one of you, uh, have any thoughts or opinions on that one? I didn't play the first one, so it's kind of didn't play the first. really comment on it too much, but, um, it does look really good. I, it got me interested in playing the first one. Yeah, I'm on the same boat as uh, Panda here. Didn't play the first one, but seeing this and after talking to you and Frodo about it, uh, I'd probably pick it up and give it a go. Right on. Uh, Bleeding Edge? I'm excited. You're excited. <laughs> I, I'm You're looking forward one. to it. Bleeding Edge was the game that I said was like a cross between Apex Legends yeah. and, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, if it was like free to play or something, I might download it and give it a go. But I doubt I'll be spending money on that until it comes out on uh, Gold or whatever it's called, right Game on. Pass. Okay. Um, what about um, the Dragon Ball Z game? Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I'm yeah, looking forward to I that getting down on some Dragon Ball Z good. for sure. I think that my only knock yeah. was, uh, again, personal things. Uh, I just... I'm tired of Frieza, always <laughs> popping up, always dying, once again, Forever, never has killed anyone of importance, um, but still somehow weasels him way, his way back to life. Because uh, he's a overall, great villain, bro, that's why. I, I, I mean, for, for some, he's a great villain. Um, <laughs> um, I, yeah, I thought it would look good. Um, and actually, I believe that they started it off, I didn't see what it said, but it was actually from... Uh, Akira Tana, uh, Toyami about the game itself and what they wanted to deliver, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, what about Crossfire X? I thought that this was a very interesting mesh of worlds in a game. Um, this was the one that I believed I described it as this looks like Quantum Break meets Metal Gear Solid meets Wildlands or Ghost Recon. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm curious to see uh, how that turns out. I don't think they showed any gameplay of that either. Yeah, no gameplay. Yeah, it definitely was just a cinematic I trailer. I don't remember seeing that one. I might have to go and just get a refresher. <clears throat> yeah, it was, yeah, it was the very one Ghost where... Recon-y. Very much so. That, that's what... When I first saw it, I, I really thought it was like oh, going to be another Metal Gear talking. Solid spinoff game because they were showing it... Uh, uh, from the the deck of a a carrier, and you saw the you know the jet fighter engines and everything up there, and or the jet fighter planes. Um, but then when they started, when they were on the inside, and he started manipulating time, I was like, is this is this Sega's attempt at saying like, hey, you know, this is exactly how Quantum Break should have been. Um, but I guess we'll see. Um, hopefully, Could that's be. something that's not too far on the horizon. Um, I believe that they also had, uh, was it Tales of, it was another Tales game. Oh, yeah. I don't remember the last part, but Tales of something. Like Tales of A, it starts with an A. Yeah, be began with an A. <clears throat> Axon or some shit. Yeah, it, and it had, uh, it looked like uh, the protagonist was a, a guy with a sword and a, a uh, another person, another female who had a gun of some sort, which... 
to me it looked like that the gun kept morphing between a shotgun and a sniper i really had no clue what was going on but it was pretty fucking cool um yeah any thoughts on that one it looked cool but yeah i i I, i'm not sold (laughs) (laughs) okay so what about uh, Blair Witch? How did how did how did we like Blair Witch? I am really excited. I, I I think I'm excited for any horror game really that comes out. I was kind of concerned because at first I thought it looked a little bit like Outlast, and I did not have a good experience with the last one. Um, but luckily, it wasn't another Outlast game. And the more that it kept going on, and I was kind of slowly starting to realize what it was. At what point really did you excited. realize that it was Blair Witch and it wasn't is someone else, uh, someone, um, Agent Frost from our writing team over here at uh, LordsofGaming.net, he thought it was Alan Wake 2 at first. At what point did you realize this is going to be a Blair Witch game? I think, I mean, obviously at the very end, whenever it showed like the symbol, it was mm-hmm. right there, but... I think more towards the end when everything was kind of like like shadows walking around and like shadow people and, and you know, whatever those little blips were or whatever they, I, I don't know how to describe them, but I think that's when I started getting a feel. I was like, oh, okay, like I get where this is going. And then when the symbol came up, I was like, okay, yeah, Blair Witch, like that makes sense, you know? You know, at what point, the point that I realized that this is a Blair Witch game is... It, it was towards the end um, of the um, trailer itself, and he's looking around with the camera, and as he looks around, he sees somebody who was staring directly into a corner at the wall. And I was like, that's exactly what happened in Blair Witch. And things kind of like started, I started I was like, oh, okay, this actually makes sense. It makes sense with the cameras, walking around with the cameras, he's kind of like talking to himself at the same time. It's like, this is a Blair Witch game. And then, yeah, shortly thereafter, that's when they showed the the uh, symbol there. I think that that's when I realized that. Um, are you going to be peeing your pants to this one, uh, Warfingers? Uh, yeah, I went and bought my own pack of uh, Depends. Yeah. But... <laughs> no, but uh, let's actually t- let's talk about this real quick, though. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it. You don't know how you feel about it? Yeah, I'm kind of like, well, why? You know, why? I can, I can, I can sign, I can kind of like co-sign with that, just because it's just very odd that like so far down the line that they would be doing a game based on it, but at the same time, is it really hard to to fathom it, given the climate? Whenever you look at things like uh, Hollywood, you know, continuously going back to old movies to update them to current day standards or remakes, you know, reboots, things like that. Yeah, but they're not making video games out of them. So it's like, what, with this game, are we going to get, like, the the resolution and some closure to the movies? Like, because I don't think in any of the movies it it ever explained what really happened and what was going on. Well, yeah, I don't think that... I think that the second one might have wrapped up, but we definitely didn't get any conclusion to the first one at all. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Right on. Um, it, what about, I, I know that this was your game of the entire thing. Um, was it called 12 Minutes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was really excited about that. <laughs> why don't you tell everybody why <laughs> you were excited about this one? <laughs> so the first thing that I noticed about 12 Minutes was that <laughs> he already knew what was happening. And then the second greatest thing that I noticed were the gigantic spoons on the table. Why were there gigantic spoons on the table when they're eating soup? I don't understand that. Someone fumbled there. <laughs> Giant wooden spoons is what I, it looked like to me. Giant yeah, they wooden definitely... spoons at that. Yeah, I'm like, what the hell are they making cakes? <laughs> you know, I, I never would have thought of something like that <laughs> until you pointed out, like, those spoons are abnormally large. They were ridiculously big. It, that, it was at that I point like, I started scanning over everything else to see, like, well, what else is out of place? Oh, what else can I find, right? Yeah. There's, there was a knife <laughs> on the counter out for no reason at all. Um, yeah, so. Uh, now, Panda, you, you seemed like that you were pretty excited. You were actually excited about this game. Uh, what did you think about it? Yeah. 
Um, I mean, I feel like I've always been a fan of like like time timelines repeating itself. Like if somebody, you know, will fall asleep and wake up and it's the same day again. I've I've always been a fan of that. I find it that it adds a little bit of creepiness because you you don't really know what's happening, I guess. But at the same time, like, you don't know what's happening with time itself. But at the same time, you know exactly what's going to happen that day. I have a feeling that it's going to be more of a resolution type game where you have to try different things to change what's happening. And um, with it being a thriller in an indie, uh, of course, I have to be excited for it. I'm always excited for those type of games, and I'm always very open-minded um, when it comes to those. Even if they, you know, don't look that great, I always like to be optimistic, as optimistic as possible, and um, I really think that this one has some potential. That one That's it, struck me as, <laughs> it, it struck me as odd. They need to put you, you on know, stage, at one Brenda. point, I thought that I thought that it... Uh, homegirl was a murderer like she had murdered her dad or something and he was over here trying to protect his murdering wife or girlfriend whatever she is to him um it's like what is going on here then i realized it's just evil groundhog day that you just wake up Bro, and you get say, smacked up against the head groundhog day <laughs> yes yeah so i mean I, I think that that's pretty much the majority of course we didn't go over halo we didn't go over gears um i think that there's definitely time down the line to go over games like that but i think that we went over pretty much most of the big major ones i think that we missed a couple of the indie ones uh were there any other games that stood out to you or any last thoughts you had on the the show as a whole i think i i think i you know explained kind of my take on it earlier Mm -hmm. um the best i could was that they they did really what they could with what they had Right on. That's a good Four. way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I, I mean, it, it, was, it was fun to watch. And, you know, I think the general consensus is we would have liked to see gameplay. Keanu was drunk. And, uh, you know, they, they talked about some good games. And I'm looking forward to some of them that are going to come out. And looking forward to see ga- uh, seeing gameplay. Uh, you know, that's pretty much Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I definitely agree. Uh, if you were to give it a rating... Um, out of ten, what would you rate this show? Oh, well, Panda, you can go ahead. Um, I am going to just throw a number out there. I think I'd have to watch it again to really give it a thorough, like, one hundred percent rating. But I would say like a seven. A seven. Oh, see, yeah, mm-hmm. I was gonna say six and a half. Yeah, I think I'm actually right there with both of y'all. I, I would have, I was debating between a six and a seven. I, I'm probably exactly right where you're at. War probably six and a half. I don't think it was a bad show. They definitely there's no. definitely not no Xbox 2013, but um, they definitely could have done things better. But for what they've shown, there wasn't that there wasn't anything that turned me off from the show. Um, it, it's still, I'll, I'll be honest, I still think that these are still better than the, the inside Xboxes. It's more entertaining than those. Uh, but that's, you know, for another time and place. Uh, but we've been on for just under an hour, and uh, we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, Panda, is any last words, anything you got going on? Uh, where can the fine people find you at? Um, so you can find me on Twitter. Um, it's just the same as my uh, gamer tag. It's um, F uh, S Panda and then F T W. Um, I'm not super active on Twitter, um, and I haven't been as active on Xbox. I've had a lot of um, other stuff going on, um, other things. Um, but I'm hoping that pretty soon, once everything calms down, then I can get back into you know tweeting updates and um, writing some more and playing some more games on the Xbox here. Absolutely. We call her the first lady over at the Lords of Gaming. you got to check her reviews out. The writing is phenomenal. 
Yeah, war. I know that you got a, a schedule for your um, your stream. You got anything big coming up or any plans? I do have plans. Um, kind of revamping my whole everything right now. I'm working on a new logo. I'm gearing up to transition over to Twitch actually, which I think is going to give me more exposure um, than Mixer. Um, but I will be trying to stream on both and um, just like with Panda my uh, you can find me on Twitch Mixer or uh, Twitter uh, it's war underscore fingers with a Z so yeah uh, but I am working working on a, a new schedule as well awesome 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 and of course I'm yep. I'm I dizzy 81 you can follow me on Twitter on the same handle as well as on Xbox, um, streaming anonymously on Mixer or just whenever I have the time to. Uh, but you can definitely find all my work over at thelordsofgaming.net, which I highly encourage you to go and bookmark and follow us on Twitter as well. And that would be at lordsgamingnet. Um, but that's all we got for today. I do want to thank everybody for tuning in, checking out what we had to say about E3. I'll leave any comments that you want. We'll Definitely try to get back to you. And peace. Cheers, guys.